Hey, hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna be talking about the newly released My Listing Update version 2.10.5. I'm gonna show you how to safely apply the updates, the update to your My Listing website. And uh, we're gonna run through all the features of this new update live in real time together. Uh, I'll be seeing this update for the first time myself. So uh, we'll see how, how everything goes and how the new features look, okay? Uh, so from the My Listing Club website, that's mylisting.club, you can scroll down the homepage just a little bit. If you don't already know about the club's YouTube channel, uh, just click on my listing video tutorials here. And if you do a search in here, there's gonna be a video for um, how to quickly and easily update the my listing theme. So if you wanna check out that, that full length video, okay? But I'm also gonna show you uh, really quickly here because the, the real meat and potatoes is looking at the features of the, the theme update, okay? All right, let's go ahead and close these down. I'm gonna log into my staging site for one of the club's starter sites. So it's one of the best practices as install theme updates, plugin updates, whatever on staging first and test before rolling it out to production, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. Okay, and I'm gonna to go to appearance and themes again. Um, watch that video that I that I mentioned about updating the theme if you really want to do you know follow best practices and all that good stuff. Okay, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. Okay, so again we're on staging, so uh, you don't need to worry about a backup or anything um, here. If you can, if you don't, if you want to, it's, it, you know that's obviously uh, an added extra measure. But um, this is staging. Um, you can always you can always back out of it since it's staging. It's not really that big of a deal. So back up if you want or not. So as we see here, if I click on the theme, we're at 210.4. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click add new theme, upload theme. I'm just gonna go to the, the place where I downloaded the, the updated theme files. You'll notice I don't use any, I don't use the plugin from ThemeForest to automatically um, notify me of updates. I like to run a really tight ship. I don't need an extra plugin just to tell me when a theme update's available. I get notified via email. I like to up, upload my um, my theme files the way I'm showing you right here. You can just manually overwrite over the top. So uh, choose the file, click install now. It's gonna ask me if I wanna overwrite the theme right in place here in a second. Because this is staging, Things are a little bit slower. That's just how it works. Okay, so we see here we want to overwrite 2.4 with 2.5. So there's it's all you got to really do is just say, yeah, replace active with uploaded. Go ahead and let that theme just overwrite the new the new stuff overwrite. And you're good to go. So as we see here, theme up, updated successfully. Sorry, I keep closing that out. Okay, so we are ready to rock. Um, on my other screen here, I'm gonna pull up the change log. Sorry, I should have done this before. It'll just take me a second. I'm gonna pull up the change log for what is new with, with this update. And uh, we're just gonna run through every single one of these together. Okay, I am almost there. Apologies again. Okay, 2.10.5, released June 7th, cool. So right off the bat, let me actually, um, yeah, that's fine. The very first one here is added option to combine listing types in the global listing type. You can also, okay, so let's just do those one at a time. They've kind of combined the same, here, I'll actually bring this over here too so you can see. So it looks like, Right here, added option to combine listing types in the global listing type. Okay, <laughs> listing types, uh, listing types. Um, here, let's just create a, yeah, this is weird how there's no further instructions. Uh, maybe they documented this somewhere, I'm guessing they didn't. Um, added option to combine listing types in the global listing type. All right, let's just see if there's something new. I also wanna point out, I've got the um, production website loaded here in another tab just so we can do a compare. Uh, let's just open one of the listing types and see if something has changed in the tabs. So typically you have, 
um, under other here, you've got the global listing type. So let's go to that same spot on staging here. Okay, here we go. Something new has appeared here. Uh, looks like the text is the same for that. All right, so that doesn't appear to be what this change is saying. Added option to combine listing types in the global listing type. Okay, so let's create a new listing type. Let's call this global listing type. And then let's go to the um, other tab here and we're gonna say, make this a global listing type. Okay, advanced settings, select this option to enable specific, oh, uh, here we go, this is the new setting. Okay, so if we go back to production and I toggle this on, we see that this, that doesn't appear here. Okay, so with that toggled on, select this option to enable specific listing types for the global listing type. This will provide the ability to choose the default post type. Okay, so let's toggle this on. Okay, so that's interesting. So before, before what would happen if you chose, let's just say this was the only option available, you would toggle on the global listing type and it would automatically assume that all of your listing types, you wanted them to be a part of it. So this is allowing you to do more of a granular, so a granular approach. So let's say I just want classes and gyms to be a part of the global listing type. You can now, I could exclude coaches in, in this particular case. What's very interesting is the ability to include WordPress posts. Um, so let's go back here to the change log. You can also select default WordPress posts to combine, combine with other listing types. I don't know why you would wanna do that. Um, uh, again, I'm learning about this, like I said, in real time with you. Uh, I think it's fun just to kind of stumble through this together. I don't know why you would want to do this. Um, hmm. I don't know, hit me up in the club's Facebook group if, if you can think of something. I, I can't think of what I would use this for. I mean, the only thing that comes to mind is, you know, what a global type is, listen type is for is to be able to search across, um, to search across all the content from one, you know, from one area, which is the global listing type, the global listing type explore page. You know what? Let's just try this out. Uh, let's do advanced here. Um, yeah, actually, let me see. I think I've, I should have. Yeah, there's posts on here. Okay, so there's posts on here. We're good there. Uh, let's see. All right, so I'm going to toggle that on. So here's the question. If we don't toggle advanced settings on, I'm assuming WordPress posts is automatically in that. Okay, so let's go ahead and just try that out. Let's publish this. We won't toggle this on because based on, you know, the previous settings before the update, you couldn't get that granular. Sorry, this is still the, the new site. You couldn't get that granular. This is the, the old, the previous version of my listing. So based on how this is set up, I should be able to now use all of these four against that global listing type. Okay, so let's go pages, let's do add new. Let's call this explore global LT. And let's edit that with Elementor. Again, sorry, I'm staging, it's gonna be a little bit slower. Do, 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 do. Okay, so let's go here, let's drop in the Explore widget. And we are gonna go here and under listing types here on the left-hand side, we're gonna choose our global listing type. Okay, so let's go ahead and publish this. I'll move 
why it's not publishing. Uh, I suspect it has something to do with Elementor, which is always fun to work with. <laughs> I That's a bit of sarcasm there. It's painful sometimes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Explore. Where's the draft here? Sort this by the date. I'm trying to find that new Explorer page. Maybe it's this one. I'm just trying to get this thing published. I don't know why Elementor is not allowing it to publish. And let's view this on the front end. Okay, there we go. That is super strange. I'm going to refresh this page and see if, see if it actually brings back the name of this page. why it's calling it auto draft. That is just bizarre. Okay. Anyway, not a big deal. The page name doesn't really matter. Okay. So we're in the global listing type. Um, yeah, I'm, I cannot think of how to go about this. Um, let's go back to our, uh, let's go to our search forms and let's drop in a general search box. Let's try that. Put that at the top. All right, let's drop that in and refresh our page. Okay, so we've got our we've got our general search box in there. So now, if I'm understanding this correctly, I should be able to do a search in this box and be able to pull up posts like regular WordPress posts. So here's. Um, here's one right here, post for category four. Um, let's go in here. I'm going to give this a, an actual name. So we'll call this um, global LT post test. Okay. I'm just going to put in a heading here. Um, this is just so we know the, the difference uh, and what stuff's coming up here. Um, this is a test for my listing 2. Point, sorry, getting around my microphone here. 2.10. No, I got to find another way to do that. 2.10.5. Okay. So I'm going to do a search on the, the this right here, 2.10.5. I'm going to go ahead and update this. Okay. So now back on the Explorer page. I'm just going to refresh this just for fun. In this search box, I should be able to drop this in and find that post. Nothing is in there. Um, let's go back here. Uh, did I update this? I thought I did. Let's view this on the front end to make sure. Okay, there's that. Let's try searching by the name of the post. Okay, that didn't work either. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I'm not even sure I would want that to be in here. Um, let's go back to our settings again. Maybe let's try to explicit. Maybe now we have to explicitly say this. Okay, so let's refresh and see if see if it works now. Okay, cool. There we go. So that's it. So it doesn't work like I think it would. I would think that you could just by toggling, not having, not toggling this on because it says right here in the instructions, select this option to enable specific listing types for the global listing type. This will also provide the ability to choose the default WP post type. Okay. So I guess they're saying you have to go, if you want the WP posts to be in there, you got to go in there. Okay. So, all right, cool. So, I guess that is a pretty cool feature to be able to search across all of your, just your regular posts if you wanted to.
Okay. All right. Let's move on here. I think we satisfied this top one here. Let's move on to what's next here. Hopefully you're seeing this okay on your screen. It's not too small. Added posts to the related listings field. So it seems like what they're doing in this update is really targeting like regular um, WordPress posts. So you can now display blog posts in, related, in the related listings block and also the preview card, okay? So let's go ahead and bring this back down. Let's keep our preview, our uh, page up there, our explore page. And let's go into the preview card now and see how we can get those posts in there. So maybe it's under terms here. If we add the terms block to the footer, Uh, let me go back and read this one more time here. Added, oh, sorry, related listings. Okay, add it to the related listings field. Okay, that's my bad. So let's go to the fields. Let's go to related listing. Drop that field in. Let's put that in here. There we go. So this is, now you can relate this to regular WordPress posts. That's really cool. Um, what else? What else? Let's go back here. Added posts to related listings field. You can now display blog posts in the related listing block and also in the preview card. Okay, so let's look at the block. Sorry if I'm going really fast. Uh, there's just a lot to cover in here. So we're gonna add the related listings um, tab block into here. And uh, let's call this related listings for short here. Um, I don't have, let's see, let's go back to the field. I'm gonna relate the field. So I've got the related listings field, and now I wanna relate it to WP posts. So let me go ahead and update this so that can populate. Okay, let's go back to our single page, content and tabs, our related listings tab. Now in here, um, That is the related listings tab, related listings field. That didn't update. Oh, okay, here we go. So we're gonna call this, this related listings would be, um, we'll call this site post. So if you wanted to have a, a, a tab that just shows related listings for your site posts, your website posts, um, you'd, you'd set up the related listing there. We only want the posts in there. We're gonna go to, back to our related listings tab. And so there we go. So now we've got that site post um, in there. Um, and then lastly is the preview card. So that, that was supposed to be able, let's go back and see what they said. You can now display blog posts in the related listing block, which I just showed you, and also in the preview card. Okay. So it wouldn't be a term, it would be a related listing. Okay, there we go. So related listing, uh, you can put your title in there, you can use um, dynamic capability, and here's the field. So it's already populated in there, site posts. Okay, so that's set up. Let's go ahead and update this. Let's regenerate those cards just for fun. We're regenerating our preview cards just so we can get that, um, that new feature in there. Again, staging, I don't know what you're doing to me, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Uh, let's see if I go in here, is it gonna, yeah, let's not do that. Let's go back here. Let's go to the regular explore page. Let's go to gems. Oh, let's go back here. Oh, so I did it to the, um, I did it to the LT. All right. So I'm going to go back into. Sorry for all the tabs I've got open. I'm gonna go, I'm back in the gym um, listing type here. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna add another related listing. If I can find it. There we go, sorry. Related listings, uh, I'm just gonna put a heading in here. Call this new RL for new related listings. And this we will call site posts. 
So a new field, which is the related listings field. It relates to regular WordPress posts and they are published. We're just gonna go with all the default options there. We're gonna go just repeat our steps that we took with that global listing type because we wanna actually just test it with a normal listing type. So single page, content and tabs. Uh, we're gonna do another related listings tab. Again, we're gonna call this site posts. You don't have to have an individual tab just for site posts. You can do what I have done here. Um, so I'm going to specify that related field. Uh, you can also do, I also recommend toggling this on hide tab if there are no listings. Um, you can also do what I've done here on this starter site. You can combine um, multiple listing types under one um, related listings field. So if you go back to this, this field, this is getting off on a little bit of a side tangent, but you don't have to just specify one listing type. You can do them all in here, okay? Just wanted to show you that. Okay, lastly, let's go back to our preview card. Let's add the related listings um, option to the footer. Let's specify our site posts in there, and let's go ahead and refresh. Let's try regenerating that cache again. All right, cool. It worked that time. Okay, so let's go back to our Explore page. Um, mine are designed a bit differently for this site. Uh, so we're not going to see it in there. Um, trying to think how I could show you. Um, I show you how we're going to do this. Let me, um, let me see if I can quickly do this. We'll just turn off. We'll just completely uh, disable WP code box for just a second. Just to see if that gets us um, back to our original design here. Okay, so it should be there in the footer. I'm not seeing it. We are under the gems listing type. Let's go back here. Let's close some of these tabs out. Close this, close this. All right, so we are in gems. We're in the preview card. I added this. Um, let's take out the title should automatically come in there. Let's just take out terms for fun. And we'll add all of these actions to here and update. Maybe the cache didn't generate, actually uh, didn't generate correctly. Shouldn't be any, shouldn't be anything else causing that. All right, let's go ahead and try again. Oh, uh, I know what it is. Okay. Let's put WP code box on. Total brain fart. My bad. Um, let's go back here. For that listing type, let's do um, the Chicago gym here. Let's um, edit this listing. Got to put something in there or it's not going to appear. You, you saw me uh, talk about that for a second. Don't show it if, if, it, if, if there's no... If there's nothing to populate, don't show it, right? So we just need to say that this post, this listing relates to, um, let's do our post here, save changes. So we're now saying that this listing relates to these WP posts. And I've got that one test one in there, right? Okay, let's go ahead and refresh this. Our design should be back and we should have that footer set up. Fingers crossed. Nothing matches our search. Why would that be? Let's reset our filters. Um, all right, it's not in there, so it's probably WP code box again. Again, I got some custom design with this site, so it's, it's not the typical preview cards that you're used to seeing.
That's still not in there, huh? All right, let's check the actual listing itself. Let's go into this gym. There should be, yeah, that's not showing either. So it makes, it's like, it's almost like it's not, there's our site posts. Hide tab if there are no listings. We'll go ahead, let's unhide that. Go back to our listing here. So here's that related listings right here and it shows zero. Okay, that's interesting. Obviously related listings, it's working. It's just something with that site post. Um, da, 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 da. No, we know the field is working because I was able to specify. Oh, here we go. Let's maybe try. Um, no, they should all belong to me as the author. Let's just make sure of that. Still not in there. I'm not really sure. I guess we'll just go ahead and move on. But the idea, you get what the idea is. So we were able to add posts to the related listings field. Um, just haven't been able to display it in the block. You know what? I, just, I would like to figure this out. So if you just stick with me here, let's see if I can figure this out. Um, I'm going to edit this listing in the back end so I don't have to keep messing with the submit form. And it doesn't appear to be a WP code box thing, even though I keep thinking it's my de design. Maybe it is in the end. Who knows? All right, so we're looking at Chicago gym. Let's edit that. So down here at the bottom, oh, here we go. That's interesting. So it's actually not in there. Okay, let's try this again. Maybe it was just something didn't get saved. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. All right, let's go back to the gym. Now let's refresh. Boom, there we go. Cool, so that's that works. So now if I look at the Explore page, see if we can get that card to show up here. Okay, there it is down there. It's kind of, it just, I've, it's because it's a new feature, I haven't styled it, but that's pretty cool. You can see it right down in here. You can see it right down in there. So it's actually got that name of the post in there. So if I just quickly change that color to white, you, should, you can see it. So there it is. If I click on that, it should take us right to the post. There we go. All right, cool. Let's, let's move on. I think we beat that one to death here. Um, we'll see what else we got. Added the option to set a default map mar marker in the listing type editor. Default map marker. Okay, so let's go to our listing type here. Um, cool, so this one's easy. So in the past, you could do default logo or a default cover image. Now you can do a default map marker specific to this listing type. So that's cool. All right, that's an easy one. Let's see what else we got. Uh, and if, let me, let me say, for those that don't know, um, let's go back to the Explorer page. I'm gonna do this by coaches just so it doesn't keep doing our location thing here. Let's see, WP code box is enabled. All right, so we got our design back, cool. Um, all right, so we have our coaches here. So if you were to drill in, you would have a, mar a map marker for these people. Got to drill way in here because they're clustered. 
But anyway, if, if you if you were to branch all these out, there would be like, like they were separated because these all use the same address, they're clustered. Uh, so it's hard to show you for this particular site. But anyway, um, you've probably seen this before unless you're very new to my listing, but you can put like a, a taxonomy uh, and a marker on the, on the map next to the actual listing, okay? So instead of showing that number there, which means it's clustered, uh, if I put just like some random address on Charlie Austin here, for example, listing, it will come up and then it'll, you can, you can put a cat, you know, a taxonomy icon on it. And in this case, you're saying, um, in this case, you're saying you can put a default map marker. So, um, I'm trying to think how I can show you this. Let me show you. Uh, This gives you a better idea of it. Um, so you have like this little icon here. Um, we could try um, base camp and see what that one's got. What's going on there? There we go. See this little icon right here? So that could be, you know, an example of a map marker, right? Okay. Um, so what that does is, again, if let's say, um, let's say you need to specify a default map marker for whatever reason, then that's just giving you that custom option. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. All right. Where are we at next? Add an alphabetical order to the listing feed widget. Okay. That one's pretty easy. So let's go to the home page. Let's edit that with Elementor. Let's scroll down here to our feed. So here's a feed. Let's edit that. And they're saying that you can now sort it by alphabetical order. So see, I'm guessing here, order by A to Z. So that's the new setting right there. And you can do ascending or descending. Okay, so that's that one. Edit option to select listing types for a quick search. Okay, so if, let's go to our listing type again. Let's edit that. Let's go to search forms. And then, um, actually it's not there, I lied. Let's go to our, how can I show you this? Let's go to our, uh, let's go to theme options and header. So theme options, header, and there's gonna be Yeah, so here's the search form. So you see, search here, get fit. So that's up here. That's we're talking about the header at this point. So search here, get fit. That's where we're talking about. Um, that's the, the placeholder text for the search. Search form featured categories, but what this new feature is, is this right here. Select the listing types you want to display in quick search. Okay, normally this took a code snippet. Okay, so let's go back here. Added option for selecting the listing types and quick search. So if I was to do a quick search here, um, I know I've got gyms, coaches, and classes. So if I did Chicago, you see how I have um, Chicago class? Let's now go in and just specify that we only want gym, gyms to show up for whatever reason. So let's go here, listing types, we're gonna choose gym. Okay, save that. Now, when I do a search in this box for Chicago, I should only see one listing and that should be the Chicago gym. Um, that's interesting. 
it's interesting that those came up in the search. We're only doing the listing types in there, even though I typed in Chicago. That's interesting. So it's pulling in other gems, even though I didn't type their name. Obviously, if I just type Chicago gem, that's going to do what it needs to do. That's interesting. So if I do, what if I type in Charlotte, does that bring up Chicago gems? That is weird. <laughs> anyway, um, you see what you see what that feature does. It's just a way to to limit what listing types are going to be returned in that search. Added hook to enable posts in quick search. Yep. Okay. So we just saw that. So if we go back to that listing, uh, back to theme options. Sorry. You'll see here that one of the listing types. Um, oh, that was global. That's not it. So let me go back. Write this again. Added hook to enable posts in the quick search. Quick shirt so show posts. Um, okay. Let's limit this to Jim. Trying to think how to test this. Uh, let's limit that to Jim. What was that post? Let me go back to my posts. I think it was called global listing type. Let's change this now to something else. Uh, Let's just call this WP post since that's what my listing keeps calling this for good reason. All right, let's go back to our search here. Actually, you know what? Let's call this, let's call this Chicago WP post. So if I'm understanding this correctly, if I type the word Chicago in here, I should be able to see my regular WordPress posts too. Uh, not seeing it in there. Um, what if I don't specify specific listing types? If I just leave that open, what happens? Type. Interesting. So it's bringing back all the listing types, no post. Maybe I'm misunderstanding what this is supposed to do. Uh, what if I put in global listing type here? Because that is pulling from WP posts or allowing us to display those, will that work? Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to just toggle all of those off so it shows all of our listing types in search. It's not in there. Uh, it could just be, you know, because it's a hook, it could just be a developer thing that we can't really touch. Added hook to enable post in quick search. Uh, let's try this one more time. Let's do view all results this time and see what happens. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's not gonna get us what we want. Um, what if, let's go to our homepage and let's See if we can, uh, we've already done that. Let's see if we can break the homepage. So what if we do, what if we just drop a search in here? That's not gonna give us what we want. We could do a short code. So what if we do theme options, sorry, theme tools, short codes. Let's do a quick search here. Um, do, 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 do. So that'll give us that. 
I wonder if this is what they mean by you could you could um, specify in here if you were to drop this, if you were to use this widget. All right, let's update that. Let's go back to our homepage and see what's what. All right, it's a little hard to read, but it's over, you see it over here at the left. It's like stretched across the screen. See it over there in the corner? Okay, so let's just type Chicago. Yeah, that's not coming up there. So maybe I'm misunderstanding you. I'm not full-blown developer, so I know enough to be dangerous that this might be something that uh, I just don't understand. Added hook to enable posts in quick search. Okay, we're just gonna move on. Um, added option in listing type editor to prevent listing slug change when you edit the title of a listing. Okay, so if we go into the listing type editor, let's go to the general tab. I think I saw that under other here. Disable slug update. Prevent listing slug from changing when you edit the listing tile title. Okay, so if we toggle that on, uh, let's let's first look at our listing. So the top the so the slug for Chicago gym. We see that uh, I'm using permalink manager, so this is a little um, unique anyway. Oh man, let me think here. Prevent listing slug from changing when you edit the listing title. So I guess, it, okay, so I guess where this would be useful is if um, you wanted the, the underlying, let's say you wanted the underlying, yeah, I know how to show you this. So let's go here and let's pull up, let's pull up a random listing here. You see for SEO purposes, I've got Permalink Manager getting, getting granular with the URL. So we're allowed, we're able to show the state, the city, the listing type, and then the listing name, listing title. And you can go super, super granular, right? Um, but if you didn't want, I'm trying to think how to explain this, um, let's say you just had like the default, my listing, um, slug for listings, which is just your, your website domain slash listing slash the name of the listing. So what if you then went in there and you changed the name of the listing to, um, uh, my listing club is awesome listing, blah, 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 blah. Um, maybe you don't want, maybe you want that underlying slug to still say domain slash listing slash maybe the title of the listing. Um, but you want to be able to have that title of the listing be longer for, you know, maybe to have, I don't know, for whatever reason. Um, I would argue that I think people get a little hung up these days on short URLs. I, that was a thing in the past. Uh, it's not really a thing anymore because the reality of the situation is people are not typing in these long URLs for listings. Uh, they're just not gonna do it. They're gonna click a link. Um, that's just the way it is. So I personally don't, Unless I'm misunderstanding the, the goal of this, I just personally don't understand it because you want that URL to have for SEO to, to have those, those keywords in there. So if the title has keywords in it, but the URL doesn't, it kind of defeats the purpose. So I'm not really seeing the benefit to this particular thing, but feel free to let me know in the Facebook group. Maybe I'm thinking about, not thinking about something, I don't know. I, I just can't think of why that was a priority, but that's just me. Added a hook to remove promote action from user dashboard, add filter, da, 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 da. Add, oh, so we're back to the hook again. I think these are like backend things. Um, yeah, I think these are just backend things that I can't really show you. But yeah, if you're not 
maybe this is saying that if you're not using promotions, like maybe it can, maybe my listing can detect that you that you're not using, you don't have uh, promoted listing products. And if that's the case, go ahead and remove that button automatically from there. Um, we could actually test that. So if we go to our, our dashboard here and we go to promotions, we don't have any promoted listings. So uh, let's see. So let me, let me think how to do this. Charlie Durango, let's go and let's do Chicago Gym. Let's stick with Chicago Gym. Um, we have it promoted, but we don't have it promoted by a product. Okay, so let's do this. So let's, go, let's go to our listings. And if I go to a listing that's, let's see if that promoted card is on there. Okay, so we see here's the promote cart, the promote quick action right here. If I were to remove, or if I was even to mark all of the promotion products as draft. So here's the promotions, fit promotions. So let's let's get rid of all of those. That should be all of them. Let's put these in draft mode. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, we do not have any promotional products added to our uh, added to the platform at this time. Um, so if this works the way that I think, when I refresh this page, this should go away. I've got another idea if this doesn't work. Okay, what if this? What if this listing? Yeah. What if this listing is promoted? Does that remove it? That's another thing we can think of here. But see, here's another thing. This shouldn't be visible. Fit, these promos should not be visible because those products were actually put in draft mode. Let me actually just delete. That is bizarre. So those promos are in draft mode, promotion, promotion. I'm just gonna delete these just to be sure here. So let's go here, fit promotions. Okay, let's filter by those. It says there's zero, that's weird. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so those are all in draft mode. Let me just get rid of these, move to trash. Okay, there's no promotion products, right? So let's do this again. Okay, so promote is still there. If I click that, okay, that's what I'd expect to see because I don't have any promotional products. That's fine, but how do we get rid of this button? My next guess is if we already promote this, so I'm gonna bring back that that, uh, that experiment failed, and that, that makes sense to me. So let's um, let's bring these back restore these products. Okay, let's make sure they're published. They are not, they are still in draft. Let's publish them. Okay, so now we should have those promotional products back. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Okay, let's go ahead and promote San Antonio Gym. We'll just give it the this first one here. Do 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 do. Yep, yep, yep. Go ahead and place the order. Okay, so at this point, if we go to our listings and this time under promotions, we see that we, our listing is now promoted. Now, if I go to this listing, if I, the promote button should be gone. Let's 
go back to our listings. So San Antonio Gym is the one we promoted. San Antonio Gym promoted is still there. Okay, maybe it's, it does actually make sense that it's still there because what if you want to buy a promotion again or buy like the higher promotion? So if you want to switch that up and go from the lowest package to a different package. That's, okay, so it's already in there. It redirects you there. I don't know, we're back again where I can't, it's this hook thing again. Um, typically that means a developer function. So I just don't know what it is that they're doing. Hook to remove promote action from the user. Yeah, I don't know. We'll move on uh, from that. Added op like 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 Perf Matters, for example, just had a recent update um, to their plugin, and like you'll always in SEO Press too, uh, you'll see a lot of mentions about hooks, updated hooks, updated filters, and all these things are typically um, developer related things, and that's why I can't just readily show you. When I get off this video, I'm probably going to dive into this and figure out what this stuff is, but. Um, until they actually tell us what it is, it, you're just kind of trying to figure it out for yourself. Okay, uh, added option to hide claim listing packages from the add listing form. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. that's interesting. Let's go back to our listing type, close some of these screens. Go back to our listing type, uh, da, 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 claim form. I'm gonna close down a lot of these screens here. Let's go there. Here's our claim form page. Uh, I don't think anything has changed there. So here's the site that has not been updated yet. This all looks the same. Um, let's add something here. So this would be building our custom uh, claim fields for how people are going to claim their listings. So it shouldn't have anything to do with that. Let's go back and read this again. Added option to hide claim listing packages from add listing form. Well, I'm brain farting that one too. Um, all right, let me move on. I'll come back to that one if, if I think of something here. Added option to allow listings with packages to be claimed. Um, so I guess this is saying if, if, if it's already been claimed with another package, you can claim it again. Uh, I don't know why you would do that. I don't know. I wish they would explain this stuff. <laughs> Added option to hide claim. I'm back to this one again. Hide option, claim listing package from add listing form. Why would the claim listing, why would the add listing form have a claim Listing, I don't understand that one either. Oh, maybe I just need more coffee. I don't know. That's bizarre. Okay. These just, uh, I just can't, I just like, these aren't, ugh. all right. I'm just going to move on before I say something here. Added option to set decimals for number format and cover details area. Okay. That's pretty self-explanatory. If you've got a listing and there's, there's numbers somehow in here, like um, this one right here, like a price range. Uh, if you want to be able to do decimals. So in the format here, number, uh, here we go. So decimals. So if I was to go and edit that same field, so we got gym, cover details, price range. If they say format as a number here, we see that the decimal is not available. Okay, all right, that is, I can see that being a useful feature. Um, tweak, changed pagination text and explore widget to reflect the correct page. Okay, so if we go to our explore page, um, we don't have pagination because we're showing all of our listings. Let me go let me go to um, theme tools, theme options. I'm just going to say set a very low number here. So I'm going to say on the explore tab here, I'm 
instead of loading 90, I'm gonna say, let's just load five images. That will kick in our pagination because I have more than five listings. Okay, so there we go. So there's our pagination. Um, let's check out, let's see, I don't wanna update the live starter site. Um, you know what, I can quickly do that, it's fine. So let's go to the live, the live site here. Let's do uh, theme options. Explore, I'm gonna set this five, just like we did on the other. Let's go to the explore page. We bring up the exact same thing here. So we're bringing up coaches. So here's the pagination. So it looks, the, cosmetically, it looks the same there. What happens if I change to the second page? So now in the slug up here on the top, we see that it says page equal two. If I do it here on the site that has yet to be updated, here, let me filter, let's do a complete reset of the filters here. So we did that on old site version. Let's reset the filters on this one. So clean filters, let's go to page two. Okay, so it says page equal to, and then on this one it says, let's go to page two. Okay, so let's see. Explore, how does it change? It's just the URL is different because of staging and live, but it looks like everything. Question mark type equals coach and page. Question mark. Sorry, I'm just bouncing back and forth to see if I can see a difference. Um, we could also use, here we could also do this. Um, I'm gonna pull something else up here. I keep saying uh, how much I love Visual, Visual Studio Code, but let's just pop in the URL that comes after the domain name because the domain name is obviously different between staging and live. So I'm gonna pop, plop that in. I'll plop this one in, finish staging, just because my brain is hurting trying to figure out the differences here. Okay, so as you see in Visual Studio Code on my screen here, they are identical. So the URLs are identical. So let's go back to what they're saying here. Change pagination text in, in explore page widget to reflect the correct page. I should have read that more carefully. Pagination text. I don't know what that is either. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna go back to the starter site and set this. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Um, I say text, so oh, that's not the URL. I should have known that. Um, I just don't know what that is. Maybe it's this? Oh, maybe that's what it is. Okay, let's do one more, let's do a reset again. Reset, reset. So this shows showing 16 results. Okay, let me go back here. Sorry about this. Let's get this back. Apple, let's do an apples to apples comparison here. Okay, we're showing five listings. We've got pagination going. And this says showing five results out of 16. Okay, that's it. So that's the change. Showing one, one to five listings out of 16. So it's just a small tweak there. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, um, tweak, explore page, taxonomy tab, show number of listings for active listing type only. Explore page, sorry, let me go back here and change this before I forget. 
Okay, so they're saying in the listing type, explore taxonomy tab. Listing type, uh, explore tabs. So search forms, explore tabs, um, explore page, taxonomy tab, show number of listings for that. So let's just drop in categories, for example. in the right place explore page taxonomy tab show number maybe it's on the actual explore page itself so let's go to All right, so we want to go to the Explore Page Taxonomy tab. Explore Page, let's edit that Explore widget. And yeah, uh, let's see, Taxonomy tab are in there. And they're saying, Taxonomy tab. Show number of listings for app active listing type only. Uh, not sure what they mean by that either. That's the taxonomy tab. Explore page taxonomy. Show number of listings for active listing type only. Oh, 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 okay. So I think what they're saying here is because we're in coaches, if I go to coach type here, which this is explore tab, it should only show what's related to that coach. Okay, so let's look at how it did it before. Thought that's how it worked before. Maybe it had mixed results. Okay, so we're in coaches now. Let me go to coach type. Yeah, it's the same. I don't understand. One more time before we move on. Explore page taxonomy tab show number of listings for active listing type only. Yeah, I have no idea what that means. So we're just gonna move on. Um, ACF Pro has been updated to version 6.1.6. .6. That's always a good thing because of performance and security. Fix require field not working for work hours field. Required field not working. So I think they're saying if you, even if you mark, even if you were to mark um, like the work hours field as required here, they're saying it, that wasn't actually working. Okay. We'll go with that. Fix issue with WP all export import location work hour field. So, okay. So if you need to do imports and exports, they're just saying they fix that issue. Fix translation for add product button slug. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. Fix issue with images not uploading for these widgets. 27 client slider and 27 map. 27 test. Okay. So they're just saying if you use either of those three widgets, then they fixed an issue with images uploading, self-explanatory. Fix, prevent notify admin on new listing submissions, emails when the listing is saved as a draft. Okay, so what I think they're saying here is admins were getting notified even when something was saved as a draft, uh, when they want to just get notified when a listing is published. That makes total sense. Fix the console error with the recurring date field, self-explanatory. Fix the video block where YouTube links that start with letter V not embedding. That's pretty self-explanatory. So if you're using the, um, the, the video field, the video URL field, uh, wherever that is right here. So the video URL field, and if someone put in, happened to put in a link. So here we look at the video field. Contact and media on this website. 
Uh, so it's right here. So let's just say this video started with the letter V they're saying, the YouTube link started with the letter V, then it would fail to embed. All right, guys, uh, that's it. Hope you found this useful. Uh, overall, eh, okay, it's not nothing mind blowing. Some of the things I, I don't know because of their hooks and their developer stuff. Maybe I'll find that out, I'll tinker. Some of the stuff doesn't make sense to me yet. Maybe it will later, which is this claim listing stuff. Uh, don't really get. Um, I think the WordPress posting, being able to relate those to listings and search for them and that sort of thing is 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 kind of interesting. Uh, maybe that again, maybe that will um, resonate more with me later. Yeah, all in all, um, it's always good to see fixes. Uh, always good to see updates, especially the ACF Pro. So all in all, okay update. Uh, glad to see that uh, the updates are coming seemingly monthly now. So that's awesome. All right, guys, hope you found this useful. Please remember to click subscribe to know when my next videos come out. And uh, yeah, it means a lot. Catch you on the next one.